My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, dear children about to be baptized, it is indeed a great joy and an immense privilege for me as your apostolic nuncio to be here with all of you here in Cebu today to commemorate the first baptism and the gifting of the image of the Santo Nino to Queen Juana, which took place 500 years ago today on April 14th, 1521. I'm so profoundly grateful to His Excellency, the Most Reverend Archbishop Jose Palma, for having invited me to be the celebrant and the preacher at this Mass on this historic occasion here in the Archdiocese of Cebu. I greet all of you, I greet the bishops present, priests, and of course, His Eminence Cardinal Quevedo, who is present with us as well. Brothers and sisters, as we know, Ferdinand Magellan and his crew had reached the Philippines on March 16th of 1521, landing on the then uninhabited island of Homohon. There they collected food and water before moving on to Limasawa in the Diocese of Masin, where they arrived on Easter Sunday, March 31st of 1521, and there celebrated Holy Mass. From Limasawa, they came here to Cebu, arriving about a week later. And here, the Cebu chieftain, Raha Humabon, and his queen, Hara Humaymai, were baptized, along with hundreds of their subjects. The chieftain and his queen becoming Carlos and Juana of Cebu. They were baptized by the chaplain of Mag Magellan's expedition, Father Pedro de Valderrama, and Magellan's chronicler, who was from Venice, Antonio Pigafetta, gave the statue of the Santo Nino to Queen Juana as a baptismal gift. 500 years ago today, the first baptisms in the Philippines, here in Cebu. We can point to that moment as the beginning <clears throat> of the evangelization of the Philippine Islands, the arrival of the light of Christ, the arrival of the glorious gospel of salvation in these islands. As we heard in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts, hearts of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. This new spirit is the Holy Spirit. It is the breath of Jesus, the life of Jesus, with he, which he breathed upon his apostles in the gospel that we heard read last Sunday on Divine Mercy Sunday. The breath of Jesus, the Spirit of God. And how beautiful is it that we, brothers and sisters, today celebrate what happened 500 years ago by doing exactly the same thing that Father Pedro de Valderrama did. We will baptize. We will give rebirth in the Spirit to these seven wonderful children. By means of the water of baptism, we will give them the light of Christ. When we, when we reflect on what happened here in Cebu 500 years ago, we cannot fail to notice that Christianity arrived in the Philippines by means of a European expedition, motivated prim primarily by commercial and national interests. Spain <clears throat> sought a new route to the famous Spice Islands in the Malocas. But we should not forget that Magellan's crew was very international. And in fact, it wasn't exclusively European, even if Europeans made up its vast majority. In addition to the numerous Spaniards and Portuguese, there were also <clears throat> men from Greece, Germany, Italy, Sicily, France, Malaysia, North Africa, Flanders, Holland, and even from Ireland. 
So the arrival of Magellan's boats certainly signifies the arrival of the Europeans in the Philippine Islands for the first time. But as we reflect on the fact that it was a European expedition organized by Spain that brought the Catholic faith to the Philippines, the gift of Catholic faith, we are confronted with a, a paradox. And the paradox is this, that Christianity is a faith that began in Asia and then spread throughout the world into large parts of Asia, North Africa, and Europe. The first nation as a whole to become Christian was in Asia, Armenia, at the beginning of the fourth century. Then in 1521, in God's providence, it was through Europe and through the activities of Spain that the Catholic faith came and arrived here in this part of Asia, in the islands of the Philippines. <clears throat> the Asian roots of Christianity were emphasized by St. John Paul II in his apostolic exhortation published more than 20 years ago in 1999 entitled Ecclesia in Asia, in which St. John Paul II wrote these very striking words and allow me to quote them for you. He wrote this, the history of the church in Asia is as old as the church herself. For it was in Asia that Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit upon his disciples and sent them to the ends of the earth to proclaim the good news and gather communities of believers. So we have this paradox of the arrival of the Christian faith here in the Philippines, that the faith which itself was born in Asia was then brought here first by means of European explorers, adventurers, and colonizers who were accompanied by missionaries. And that was a great gift, the gift of Catholic faith. As St. Paul, as St. John Paul II went on to say in that same document, Ecclesia in Asia, it was inevitable that the proclamation of the gospel by Western missionaries would be influenced by the cultures from which they came. That should not surprise us. At the outset, at the beginning of the missionary proclamation of salvation, the outward forms, the outward forms of the proclamation would reflect the Catholic culture of the missionaries themselves. But what is so beautiful about Philippine Catholicism and what we celebrate today with hearts filled with joy is the fact that in these five centuries, in these 500 years, the Catholic faith has entered deeply into Filipino culture and has produced a distinctively Filipino expression of the unchanging and universal truth of the Catholic faith. We see the results of that process in countless elements of Filipino Catholicism. Simbangabi masses, for example. Today, in a special way, we see that process in our devotion to the Santo Nino, even his name is in Spanish. As Pope Francis recently commented in his video message to you on the anniversary, the 500th anniversary of the evangelization of the Philippines, the Pope said this, the tender love of the Santo Nino is a symbol of the arrival of Christianity in your archipelago. Yes, devotion to the holy child, Jesus, to the infant of Prague, began in Europe and then came to the Philippines where it has been transformed into a typically Filipino devotion so beautifully evident in your annual Sinulog Santo Nino festival here every year in Cebu. And today, 500 years after Queen Juana embraced the child Jesus and was baptized and danced with beautiful joy, the same Catholic faith is being carried throughout the world by Filipino Catholics. Filipino Catholics who are not explorers or adventurers or colonizers, but in many cases, overseas Filipino workers bringing with them their Catholic faith and their tender devotion to the Santo Nino to every corner of the world today. In 1521, the Catholic faith came to the Philippines by means of an expedition sent by Spain. 
In 2021, 500 years later, the Apostolic Nuncio sent to Spain by the Holy Father France, Pope Francis has come from the Philippines. Archbishop Bernardito Auza, what a beautiful correspondence of the gift coming from Spain and now the gift returning to Spain. So the faith that began in Asia was transported to this part of Asia by Europeans and now is being retransported back to Europe and to other places around the world by Filipinos. And what do we see in this? We see the universality of the Catholic faith. The Catholic faith cannot be identified with any single culture. It is rather the life-giving truth of God that can be embraced by any culture and with time will transform that culture so that, as here in the Philippines, that culture will give its own particular expression, its own particular flavor to the Catholic faith. Now, of course, none of us can pretend that in 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, there haven't been moments of difficulty and contradictions, even attitudes and mentalities, which at times did not reflect the message of Jesus. That is true of the church as a whole, and it is true of the church in the Philippines. There is light and darkness. But what we celebrate today, brothers and sisters, is the light, the beautiful light of Christ, which shone in the heart of Queen Juana as she danced. The beautiful light of Christ, which will soon shine in these children who will be baptized today, and which will be expressed by the lighted candle that their godparents will receive. As I say to the newly baptized children in a few minutes, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. This is an aspiration that the Filipino nation as a whole and all of us here individually can make our own on this historic day. 500 years ago today, the Philippines was enlightened by Christ. Let us continue to walk always as children of the light, keeping the flame of fa faith alive in our hearts so that when the Lord comes to call each of us, and he will come, we may go out to meet him and enter into life with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Let us turn to Our Lady, affectionately known as Inahang Maria, here in Cebu. She who, together with St. Joseph, whose year we are celebrating, took care of the Santo Nino in their humble house in Nazareth. As Pope Francis said in his video message to the Filipino nation, that Santo Nino reminds us of the hidden life of the Holy Family in Nazareth. Mary and Joseph raised the child Jesus with love. By opening the doors of your families to the Holy Child, you too will be able to transmit to your children the faith you received from your parents. Thank you, Pope Francis says in his video to you. Thank you for that deep sense of family, community, and fraternity that keeps you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and attentive in charity. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us ask the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, to bless, protect, and inspire all Filipino families, especially in this difficult time of the COVID pandemic. Let us recommit ourselves today to our own baptismal calling so that we will be witnesses to the light of Christ, not only here in the Philippines, but indeed throughout the entire world. May God bless you and keep you, and happy 500th anniversary.